What a mighty God. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What a mighty God. Yes, sir. You got so much going on in your life. You got so much going on. Whether it be on your job. Your spouses, with your children, with your body. Finance. You got so much going on. And to be honest, you haven't handled it all quite well. Yes. You haven't handled it all quite well. But God is still allowing you to get up. Still left you with some joy in your heart. That's the love of God. The love of God. Some folks don't know how you keep going on with everything you're dealing with, everything you've been through. But they don't know your God. Yes, sir. They don't know what He's capable of. They don't know the extent of his power and his majesty and his authority. Be glad that you're a child of the king. So you do know that because you're his child, you got some authority over you. I told you 
with me to Genesis chapter 3. I want to look at a couple of different passages of scripture, but I don't want to all time in. Have your Bibles on me. Genesis chapter 3. And verse 1. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. I'm reading from the New King of Jesus. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Jump down to verse 13. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. Turn to First Timothy, chapter four, and verse one. First Timothy, chapter four, and verse one. Pray the Lord that you teach them. First Timothy chapter four and verse one. We got it. Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6. And verse 3. Galatians chapter 6. And verse 3. Y'all with me? For if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Truth and deception. Truth and deception. Ah. I don't know what it is about man. I don't know what it is about man and why it seems that he hates truth. We want folk to tell us the truth, but we really don't like the truth. You know, I wonder if 
it's his loathing for truth that makes him an easy target for deception. Because he hates truth, because truth doesn't make him feel good about himself. He's an easy, open target to be deceived. I, I don't know why we are made the way we are. But what I do know is we got an issue with ourselves. Man has a problem thinking he's not all that in a bag of chips. That's man's problem. That's man's problem. We think a lot of ourselves. We think a lot of ourselves. We're smart, we're gifted, we're talented, we are skillful and cunning. We can reach heights that we can only imagine. We reach the moon. We built telescopes to see Jupiter. We been to the depths of the ocean. We get in machines that weigh tons and tons of pounds and fly in the air with them. We do the unthinkable. We do the unthinkable. Man thinks very highly of himself. He thinks very highly of himself. And it's, it's evidence of that in the text before us because Satan actually appeases and appeals to man by appealing to his desire to be like God. And it, it kind of insinuates that man has a God complex. Man has a God complex. We want to, in other words, we put ourselves in realms where only God belongs. We put ourselves in realms where only God belongs. And that's areas of our lives that we think God does not intervene. We believe that God does not, or He does not do things that we don't want Him or allow Him to do. And we get angry if anybody tells us that we are restrained by God in any way, shape, or form. No, that's not God. Because then He's making me do something, or He's forcing me to do something. And that takes away power from you. Power you're not willing to relinquish. And I get that. I get that. But there are three areas of of deception that I want to look at today. I want to look at today. I want to look at being deceived by Satan. Deceived by false teaching. And then deception by our own self. Deceived by Satan, deceived by false prophets, false teachers, <laughs> false preachers, and deceptions by ourselves. By ourselves. I look at the text in Genesis, and you know the first thing that started to bother me. It's, it's amazing because I've read this text. I don't know how many times in my life. But what began to bother me was was this really the first time that Eve and this serpent had a conversation? That's what I wonder. Because 
How is she not startled or disturbed to some degree by a talking snake? But the scripture doesn't indicate anywhere. I mean, there's absolutely zero indication in the text that this talking animal disturbed her. It was almost like she was talking to a companion. Someone she trusted. Now, I, I don't want to imply that there was other conversation because the text does not tell us that. However, I am inclined to believe that before it got to this part of the dialogue, there was prior dialogue. I don't think he just rolled up on her. He's like, hey, girl. I don't think it happened like that. I don't, I don't believe it happened like that. But what made me question whether or not this was, you know, there was conversation prior to he got to this portion of the dialogue or, or something was, how did the serpent know that God said, don't eat of the tree. <laughs> it's only Adam and Eve in the garden. The word was only given to Adam. Adam taught Eve. Adam told Eve, some baby, that tree right there, don't touch it. God said, don't eat that tree. But I, I, I'm inclined to believe because she went on to say, God said, don't eat it or touch it. That Adam probably told her that. Now, don't even go near it. Don't smell it. Don't touch it. Don't go even, don't go buy it. That way you won't be enticed. But how did the serpent know what God told him? So to see, the thing is, the reason why I see that as being important is because somewhere in the dialogue, he was able to give her enough information, either about himself, about what he knew, for her to feel comfortable exchanging with him. Not only comfortable in the exchange, but also confident in what he had to say. He came to her with word. He came to her with word. And look at how he said it. Look at how he said it. He said, has God indeed said it? In other words, is it true? Is it true that God said for you not to eat of the tree in the garden? And he said of any tree. He kind of made it broad so he could find his little line to creep in down. He said, is it true God told you not to eat from none of the trees? He's like, oh, no, nah, we can eat from these trees. We just can't eat from that one. But he comes to her with words. See, it, it, what that does, because she, unless Adam had been talking to him, or it, it's obvious that she didn't say nothing to him regarding the tree prior to it. Where did the serpent get that information from? He had to have been with God. He had to have been either some type of angelic being or something he had to, where else did he get it from? We got that word from God. So it's obvious he had to have gotten it from him as well. So because of how he comes, and because he comes carrying word, she's confident in what he has to say. She actually gives him an ear. Baby, it's amazing. It's amazing. And just because we got folk who can quote scripture. Yeah. <laughs> we believe they are of God. We believe they are of God. We believe they are they're sent from God. 
But see, the thing was, his intent was to come and destroy the confidence that they had in God's word. See, the thing is, is you got to be confident that God's word is true. You've got to be confident that God's word is true. You, you can't be confused about it. You can't be, well, maybe that's right, maybe it ain't. And what he tried to do, what he tried to say was, okay, I know that's what God said, but is that really what he meant? Yeah. I know he said if you eat that tree, you're going to die, but do you really think? <laughs> If you do that, you're going to die. Wow. <laughs> that, that's what he does. That's what he does because then what we do, we begin to question what God said. We begin to question it. Can it really be that way? You know, he causes you to rethink what you heard. He causes you to rethink what you've been told. He calls you to rethink what his word says to you verbatim. He calls you to rethink it. Whether that's truly what he meant when he said it. How do I know that this is real? The Bible says we shouldn't have children outside of marriage. The Bible says we should save ourselves until marriage. But come on, is that really that bad? Come on, you ain't going to buy the car without test driving. I don't even say something. Now, you ain't gonna really be, that ain't really no big thing if you do that. 
What difference does that make? You ain't gonna die. They ain't gonna put you out of church. They ain't gonna put you out of the choir. Right. 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 And Satan twists truth. The Bible says that he is a liar. He is a liar. And his intent is to distort the truth of God. Why? Because one, he knows truth matters. Truth matters. Truth matters will set you free. When you can live in your truth, when you can accept your truth, folk ain't got lies they can tell about you. And when they try, it don't bother you. Truth matters. And guess what? Satan knows the truth. He knows the truth. Why do you think he's after the kingdom of God? He's after the he's after Jesus, folks. He's telling you right now. Satan don't care nothing about nation of Islam. He don't care nothing about Buddhists and Hindus and all these other things, Confucianism. He don't care nothing because they lost the confused anyway. He he ain't thinking about them. He is after the truth. Why do you think Christianity is so confused? Tell me, Holy Spirit. You got 200 churches worshiping 200 different ways. With 200 different doctrines. How is that? Deception. Confusion. This church got apostles and prophets and bishops and all this other stuff they won't call themselves. Licensing anybody and everybody. Ordaining people knowing good well. They ain't got no business having hands laid on by elders. Why? Deception. Confusion. Priests being celibate. There's no such practice taught in scripture. Where do they get it from? It's to bring confusion to truth. The devil attacks truth. We should have one church. There should be one church under one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Folk want to sprinkle baptism? Sprinkle on somebody's head. Where they get that from? I can't find that nowhere in here. Baptism is about full immersion. Period. Then you have folk talking about it. Well, if you was baptized in the name of Jesus, you ain't baptized. You got to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's Jesus. You know, fool, that's Jesus. The Bible said in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It didn't say in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. It just said in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Guess what his name is? Jesus. You can't go against baptizing in Jesus. Paul baptized in the name of Jesus. Peter baptized in the name of Jesus. How can the Baptist church say that's not, that ain't acceptable? Foolishness, deception. Preach good here on this spirit. It's deception, and we got the world just out there just laughing, calling us hypocrites. We look like fools on TV. That just makes me sick. He's telling that you Folk flock to nothing. 
See these people falling out on the ground like they possessed? It's on my nerve. Preacher going up talking about you healed and they fall out back. Something this is. Satan is after the truth. He's after the truth. And guess what? He's using God's name against him. That's exactly what Satan did in the garden. He used God's own word to deceive his people. False preachers. False preachers. What is that? Timothy. Turn that. Get off here. Turn. False preachers and teachers. And what Paul was doing here is he was trying to. He, he, he had said this in other texts. In the book of Acts, he had spoken about now how these false preachers are going to come. And these false prophets are going to come and they're going to infiltrate the church. And they're going to infiltrate the presbytery. And tell folk they've been sent by Christ. And he's telling them that there will be some folk who are going to fall prey to this false teaching. Who are of the family of God. They're going to fall to it. Why? Because they're going to come with word. Enticing words at that. And they're going to make it sound good. They're going to make it sound nice and fluffy. They're going to motivate you. It's going to be so encouraging. And I've heard me say before, somebody ought to leave mad and upset behind the word of God every now and then. Because it ought to cut you sometimes. Now don't get me wrong. I believe in comforting ye, comforting ye, my people. But I also believe in teaching them with knowledge and understanding. He says false teachers will rise up. The Bible talks about them being hired. Wolves in sheep's clothing. They know how to talk to talk. Walk to walk. They know how to fool you and dress it up real good. And they got degrees behind them to justify them. And then they got mega churches. Why do, why do folks seem to flock to lies? And flee from truth. How is it you got folk? As long as you make me feel good about myself, as long as you're motivating me, as long as you are just telling me I can do all things through Christ, whoo, I'm coming. Give me out of an hour. I'll be there. But 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 if you're gonna go, if I have to come in there and you're gonna tell me. You're going to tell me that I ain't what I thought I was? You're going to tell me I'm nothing? You're going to tell me that what I deserve is a burning hell? And then on top of that, you're going to keep me for two hours? I ain't coming. And out of the two hours, an hour plus, my man, you preaching. I ain't coming for that. <laughs> we flock to mess and we flee from truth. But Paul also said that. He said a time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Having itching ears, they will do what? Turn to fables. <laughs> so what you got is you got preachers rising up all over the place that do nothing but preach what people want to hear. Yeah. Instead of preaching what they need to hear. Preach, sir. 
And they think they're helping folk. They ain't helping these people. Because when life happens to them, they respond to it the exact same way as the heathen. And they wonder then, where is my God? If you're being taught right, you know God was there the whole time. Come on, come on, come on. If you're being taught right, you know God was the one that released the devil on you. <laughs> I don't like that. What are you talking about? You said God sent the devil? Yes. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to hear those kind of things. It says false teachers. False teachers who come to put yokes around your neck. Things I just don't understand. Things I just don't understand. I don't know how you got some under Christianity that believe that you have to adhere to certain practices for salvation. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. Salvation ain't got nothing to do with how often you come to church. It ain't got nothing to do with how often you pray. It ain't got nothing to do with what you eat. It ain't got nothing to do with where you live. It ain't got nothing to do with how good you are or how bad you are, how right you are, how wrong you are. Salvation has nothing to do with any of that. But that ain't what we tell people. We tell people you got to live this way, do this, do that, don't eat this, wear that on your head, pray this many times a day, don't you wear that in church. This is what, this is what we tell people. And is that not what we just read in scripture? He called it doctrines of demons. He called it doctrines of demons. And it ain't necessarily that he's coming to you telling you about demons or the worship demons, but it's doctrines that are twisting and perverting the truth of Christ. The perverting the truth. The twisting it. And you wonder why they twist it? I, the only thing that I can think of is they want to be able to do something that you are not. They want to be able to tell you, I'm going to glory because I did X, Y, and Z. And you're not going because you didn't do what I did. I'll tell you right now, I ain't going to glory because I wear a collar. Come on, come on, come on. I'm going to glory because of Christ. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Point blank. I'm going to glory because of Christ. He said they will deceive you. They'll put yokes around your neck forbidding to marry. He's talking about right there. It's Catholicism. Why are you forbidding these preachers to marry? Craziest thing. You're a man, ain't you? Unless you got the gift of celibacy, you will never fulfill such a thing. You'll never fulfill such a thing. We are physical creatures. We are physical creatures. Abstainment from foods. Sure, the law of God did talk about what we should eat, what we should not eat. What is clean, what is unclean. But Christ also said, I didn't come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill the law. So we no longer have to do burnt out sacrifices. Why do we still have to wear fringes? If we no longer have to do burnt out sacrifices, if he paid it all, why do we have to abstain from certain means? If he fulfilled the law, why do we have to have incense burning? If he fulfilled the law, 
Beloved, I just want us to get to a point as the people of God where we praise and worship God in spirit and in truth and not seeking our own self-righteousness. Because the truth of the matter, these things, diets and, and celibacy, they do not save nor do they sanctify you. I know I'm right about it. None of that stuff will save you. And if you do those things, you ain't no more a saint than I am. You're no more a saint than I am. And the thing is, if you if you have been convicted to, to, to adhere to a certain diet or to do certain things, that's fine and well. That's fine. Ain't nobody, that's fine if that's what you want to do. But the deception comes when you come and point the finger at somebody else and tell them they going to hell for not doing it. Let every man consult with his own conscience. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. Ain't nobody saying that about you. But, but, but don't put the yoke around my neck. And look at me like I'm something different because I like a poor child. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Or because I don't pray with fringes on or my head covered or praying to the east or all that other stuff you want to try and say. Don't, 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 don't bring that here talking about you something more than me. Because now you're deceiving me. Now that's a sin on your part. None of that's going to save you. None of that sanctifies you. Sanctified by his spirit. What is not pleasing in my life, the Holy Spirit will remove out of my life. What God is not pleased with and how I live my life, he will reveal to me. And pray he gives me strength to change some stuff in my life. I ain't got to live a certain way because that's what you said. I ain't got to do things a certain way because that's what you said. May the word of God be a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my pathway. May the spirit of God lead me and guide me into all truth. Yes, Lord. False preachers. False teachers. Coming to pervert the truth of God. The truth of God. And then lastly, coming out of Galatians 6. If any man think of himself to be something, he deceives himself. We will convince ourselves We will convince ourselves that who we are, what we are, is all right with God. Let me tell you something. Y'all hear me? Y'all listen? If you ain't got Christ, there's no part of your life that is right with God. You can't get right with God. The only right that God can find in you is His Son. That's the only right he can find in you. And because he, you have the embodiment of his son dwelling within you, that's why God says, I'll bless you anyhow. Yeah. Because you cannot deserve or earn God's favor. We want to say, oh, God is such a good God. God is such a loving God. God, God is such a giving God. No, 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 no. God loves his son. God loves his son. And God is in covenant 
with his son. And because of that covenant, grace rains down upon us. And we benefit from the covenant of Christ, which is the covenant of grace. And those who are saved, those who are being kept by the blood of Christ, he's raining on us. And the heathen get the benefit because we're still among the tares. So therefore, he raises on the just and the unjust. But there will be a great separation. Where the wheat will be separated from those tares. And the tares will be thrown into the fire. But we will deceive ourselves because we think so much of ourselves. We think we know it all. We think we can get it right. And, and, and I told my Bible study class, we want God to be Lord over everything in our, that's around us, over our enemies, over this land. But you, you just can't be Lord over me. <laughs> you, you just can't be Lord over me. I, I'm going to let you in the areas and the realms of my world that I want you to be in, where I invite you in, where I call on you and ask you to come in. All right, Lord, I need you to come in there and work something right here. But until I ask you, don't come in. Yeah, you got it going on. I want you to be Lord over everything else, but you're not Lord over me. I still want to go where I want to go, do what I want to do, when I want to do it, how I want to do it, and with who I want to do it to, God. But, but I love you. <laughs> you still my Jesus. You, you. That's, what, that's what we do. And we deceive ourselves into thinking we're right. Well, and that text in Galatians chapter 6 is talking about really sweeping around your own front door before you sweep around mine. Take the beam out your own eye before you take the beam out of mine. In other words, self righteous Pharisee. <laughs> You are just as filthy. You are just as dirty as the next man. There ain't nothing about you that makes you any better than anyone else. And if any man thinks he does not sin, then you are lying. And the truth is that the Bible. That is the Bible. Truth and deception. You better believe anywhere where truth goes forward, somebody will be there to twist and pervert the truth. You don't know how often it comes back to me about something I've said up here where all you heard was the end of it. And don't know the context. Don't know what scripture I took it out of. All you know is the pastor said we can drink it. That's what you took out of here. Hallelujah.
I ain't saying you won't go through trouble. But how you handle your trouble. It'll cause you not to get so down. So depressed. So anxious. I tell you, if you go and do something now, it ain't been that long since your last trial. How'd you get out of that? Oh, well, you know, Uncle Jimmy, he gave me some money. Well, thank God for Uncle Jimmy. The truth will set you free. We pervert the truth. Quit telling folks what they got to be to walk this life. Just tell them about Jesus. Just tell people about Jesus. If we knew more about who Jesus is, who God is in himself, what he says about himself, what he truly requires of us as his children, if we had a better understanding of that, we wouldn't have so much confusion. We wouldn't have it. But you just take what some preacher get up and did. You just take what Big Mama told you. You just take what you've seen on TV. What the world keeps telling you about who Jesus is. Because Lord knows you ain't read no Bible. Huh? You ain't read no Bible. I remember listening to a rapper. I'm not sure. <laughs> Called him on YouTube. And he was talking about what all of you. And he grew up in the church and he just got to a point where he was about 16. And he just told his mom, Mom, the people down there are full of it. That's what he told him. He's like, I ain't going back down. He's like, it's a joke. And he said, you know, he said, hey, y'all tell me if I'm wrong. That's what he said. He said, y'all tell me if I'm wrong. But he said, 90% of you so-called Christians, I'm telling you, it hit so hard, it hit so hard for me. He said, 90% of you so-called Christians who go down to them churches, and be up there jumping all over them pews and hollering and jumping around and doing all that stuff. He said, 90% of them ain't even read the Bible. He said, they ain't even read the book about this one they call their God. But they down there doing all this stuff. They ain't even read the Bible. And when he said that, I was like, that Negro right. <laughs> I ain't lying. He's right. You ought to read your Bible sometime. Yeah. And, and if you got a hard time when it comes to Bible study, come on. But the thing is, you cannot serve a God, you cannot love a God. You cannot meet the expectations of a God that you don't know. That's why we can't benefit from being God's children. We don't know what he promised. We don't know what he told us is ours. We don't know what we have authority over. We don't know what we have dominion over in our lives. Because we don't know him. I had to tell a young man earlier this week in my Bible study class, they heard me say, God ain't sending me in the hill for sin. I know that's what you've been told, but that ain't why he's sending folk to hell. Just those that are going, he's justified by it. He's sending a man to hell for unbelief. That's it. That's it. You need some Bible? What's the only unforgivable sin? Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. You read that, ain't you? 
Unbelief. That's what that is. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is unbelief. That's why God is sending man to hell. Get over this stuff. The truth will set you free. You don't know how liberating it is to know that the handwriting of ordinance against me has been nailed to the cross. I don't care how bad you are. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what places you've been in. If you're a child of, of, of the king, it's all been nailed to the cross. Amen. It's all been nailed to the cross. The debt has been paid for all of it. And you can't be tried a second time. You can't be, you can't be tried again. Your sins are covered. Your sins are forgiven. Your sins have been thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. And at this very moment, the, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And to see you know, on your behalf right now. Every time somebody comes to God, comes to God to try to accuse you, the, the, the advocate stands up. He says, oh, my blood is still on him. Every time Satan comes to accuse you, oh, yep, he did it, but uh, my blood is still on him. That's liberating. That'll free your mind. That frees your spirit. So you can worship and serve God in complete liberty yeah. without restraint yeah. without strongholds yeah. people of God it's time for us to start being the people of God right. care about the, the church church folk I, they get on my nerves church folk <laughs> forget about Get a, you know the, the reason why I, I, I struggle saying you know the church do this, the church do that, is because everybody when they look at the church, they just looking at the building and all the folk they go there. Come on, man. So I gotta be careful about saying the church all the time and just say the people of God, because everybody that shows up on Sunday morning ain't God's people. And not all God's people. Come on, brother. Don't be deceived. 